everyone, it's Kiri, and as you can see by this photo, it's time for another Patreon collab video. This time, my wonderful and talented patrons chose the theme 80s punk. Make sure to stay to the end of the video to see more photos of their fabulous work. So the character I chose to go with this theme is Tank Girl. Tank Girl is a British comic book character created by Alan Martin and Jamie Hewlett. The first Tank Girl comic came out in 1988 and was super popular in the late 80s and early 90s time frame. In 1995, the movie Tank Girl was released starring the amazing Laurie Petty. I also heard there's a possible reboot in the works with Margot Robbie's production company. These days, Tank Girl is an iconic character popular in lots of my favorite art and cosplay. I chose Tank Girl because the comic is super influenced by punk visual art with the whole anarchy and psychedelic vibe. I also love her whole diesel punk look. I created a Tank Girl doll inspired by the movie a few years ago, but I always wanted to revisit the character in more of a comic book style. So in today's video, I'm pretty much showing the whole process, so let's get started. I'm using this Ever After High doll. I'm not really sure what character it is. If you do know, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious as to what it is. A long time ago, I just prepped a bunch of dolls and threw them in my stock box, and I forgot what their names were. So I've used the acetone to remove all of the factory paint, and I'm using a little bit of this tacky glue because what I'm going to do is I'm, she's meant to wear a hat, so I'm going to flock the hair rather than root it. On the last Tank Girl that I did, I did do a uh, full reroute and then cut it super short. And I really didn't like that look for this one. So I'm using this stuff called Fun Flock. And I just used the tacky glue and then sprinkled it over top, shook it out onto a piece of paper so I can save all that leftover. And then as you can see, that's the first layer. I had to do that about four times just to build it up thick enough. And then I went back. Um, I actually here you can see, I think I only had three layers and it still wasn't I still wasn't happy with it so I went back and added more but anyway so once I had the, the layers that I wanted I went ahead and rooted a few pieces because she has that sort of buzz cut with some pieces falling out so starting off on the face up I'm just shaping the eyes with the white watercolor pencil and then outlining it here I'm using some museum aquarelle uh, by Karen Dosh in a Peter Gray just to give it some shape. For her face, I'm giving her sort of a squinty eye on one side with a sort of a scowl in her mouth. And I used a bunch of different kinds of reference photos to try to get just the exact uh, characteristics I wanted in her face. And um, I wanted her to look be looking to the side and one of the eye be a little bit squinty and one of the eyebrows be a little bit raised. So I used a bunch of different reference photos for that just to and kind of drew it out on paper beforehand. So I'm going in with some pan pastel I hand mixed into sort of a purpley pink color and giving her the scowling forehead look that I wanted. Also shading around the one side of the mouth that I want her to be kind of smirking. Just getting most of my shading work done. I'm running out of some pan pastel and white there. <laughs> Using every little last bit. So I'm using that white just to highlight the areas on the, I went in with the deep darks and then I'm pulling it out with the white. Now just shaping the upper lid a little bit better. And in my videos now I decided for, um, for now I'm sort of showing some of the work real time, but then when it becomes repetitive, I start to speed it up. I can't obviously show the whole process. This took several hours, but let me know what you guys think. Do you like that format? So once I've added color to the lip, then I'm shaping it with a watercolor pencil and a terracotta. I want her lips to look a little bit reddish, but with an orangey shift. So 
So I'm doing a little bit of line work in the corners of the mouth and I'm using the Museum Aquarelle by Karen Dosh, I think, for that. Oh, nope, that's a um, Arteza. And just darkening it up at the corners and tapering off as it comes towards the center. Just doing some more shading in some of the deeper areas. And highlighting the forward, forehead area and just making sure I'm just adding several layers so in between these coats I'm doing some spraying of the Mr. Super Clear. I know I didn't mention at the beginning I did coat her with several coats of MSC Mr. Super Clear fat, flat sealant. If you're interested in the supplies that I use in the description box below there's a link to my Amazon storefront and I have all the supplies that I can think of that I use in there along with some mini descriptions as to how I use them. If you do make any purchases from there of course I get a small commission. Adding more detail to the lips, darkening it up, I decided I wanted it a little bit more red. And onto the eyebrows. So I wanted the one eyebrow to be sort of raised, so she's really giving like a sneaky smirk and using her whole face. <laughs> So I'm blending out the eyebrows first with the uh, pa pan pastel, just getting the shape how I want it, using an eraser to shape it. And once I have the shape, then I'll go back with the pencil and add the individual hairs. So to get her side glance, I sort of hold the head in the direction that I want her to be looking and then I just added dots as if to point out where the pupil would be so it just tells me if it looks right like okay if the pupil was here would it look like she was looking directly at me and that kind of helps me gauge how I where I want to draw the iris and the rest of the eye. So before we get started on the next steps, I want to share with you something I dropped in Etsy recently. It's my beginner guide to doll repainting. It's a printable step-by-step -step learning module. It's only $5 for immediate download. It walks through, through the steps of sealing, building shapes, adding color and shading, and final touches with all kinds of tips along the way and a full beginner supply list. So if you're a learner who likes to have things printed out and next to you as you're working, this is something that might be helpful to you. So it's available now in my Etsy shop and the link is in the description box below. So next up I'm just doing a little bit of body blushing, mixing up some shades similar to what I did on the face and getting sort of a purpley pink color to do in uh, just to bring out some of those details that are in the sculpt of the body. I did seal her body with MSC and I used the Mr. Super Clear Flat UV Cut. Give her a little signature on the back and on to the costume. So I made this hat a while back, actually when I made the last Tank Girl that I, uh, so it was quite a few years ago. And I also made this t-shirt that I didn't like, so I'm just altering them to work with this particular one. So the hat, I just did some 
singeing and some inking to make it look a little tattered and distressed. And then with the shirt, I'm just cutting it up to make it more fitted so I could put a snap on the back. And just cutting it down, making it really skimpy. I wanted it short, showing a lot of skin. I wanted to put some tattoos on this one, so I want to show as much skin as possible. I think I made this for the last one and I just didn't like the shape. And so this time I'm just reworking it. I'm using some fray check to make sure that those uh, stitches don't come loose. This is also a pair of pants. I think this is actually a doll pair of pants that I had and I'm just reworking those as well. It was just the type of denim I wanted so I didn't, I kept the crotch area but then I shape them to the rest of the the doll. Now I want them nice and distressed so I'm using some scissors and different tools to pull out the fringe at the bottom and make some holes. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing that all of the thread colors in this fabric are dark and I wanted that nice white look of the fringe coming out at the bottom. So you'll see me go back in a little bit. I do some painting to that. Using a nail file, it's one of my favorite tools to use with these dolls. <laughs> and just sanding down some areas and using a a craft knife to scuff them up a little bit. So here's where I'm just going in with some craft paint and a little bit of uh, water to water it down and taking that to the bottom of the shorts just to pull out some of those threads and make it look like uh, more natural. All right, looks better. I did go back with some inks and different paints to add in some darker areas to it later. I don't know if I filmed that. So for her uh, legs, I wanted to use some, uh, give her some fishnets. So I'm pulling out a couple of the fishnets that I have in my stock. And I wanted to go with the thinner kind. This is also a pair of pants from another doll. And what I do is when I purchase a doll, I'll often save pieces of those costumes in case there's something that I can use later. It just so happens with this character, I was able to reuse a ton of stuff. So that really saves me a lot of time and I can pass those savings on to the customer and price the doll a little bit lower. So I was really happy to be able to do that. So I'm just making some stockings. I ended up cutting the stockings um, and restitching them because I didn't want them to have any feet. Uh, just worked better with the boots that she had. So I made a striped pair as well, or just one, and used a lighter to distress the stockings. So another fun thing that I have is a big stockpile of different kinds of accessories like this. I think these are like G.I. Joe accessories. So I'm just matching them to the doll, making sure that the scale isn't too off, even though Tank Girl tends to have huge, huge accessories. <laughs> So if you're a supporter over on Patreon, I was uh, painting these boots in the video. The close-up clip for this month is the detail work that I did. It's a real-time process of how I distressed these boots and painted them all the way through. So check that out. And then for this one, um, I really went in with all different kinds and made a huge mess with my paints there. <laughs> but I did a lot of distressing work and this is, this is one of the most fun projects related to this doll I had. using some silver wax to pull out some of the metal parts on it and using some paint pens to go in and do some drawing and, and lettering. 
So one thing I wanted to do, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do the black marks under the eyes, which also would have been really cool with this one, but I really wanted to do another one with a band-aid. I did this on the last one and I just really loved it. So I used some epoxy sculpt and I switched sides. I decided to put it on the side where she was squinting and I just painted that once it dried, I uh, painted it up with some craft paints and then sealed it with some Liquitex matte varnish. Onto the hair. So like I said, I gave her some flocking for the rest of the head, but the pieces that come out from the hat, I wanted those to be really fun. So I'm just adding some regular hair gel, working that through. And then just sort of imagining what it would look like at certain lengths and not being afraid to chop it off because I did such a small reroute on this that I was able to, um, you know, if I needed to, I could always add more. So I'm using my razor to texturize the ends and using my thinning shears just to take down some of that uh, thickness. Now I'm going back in with a mini flat iron and flat ironing those pieces. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave them a little bit. Um, they look kind of like they're crimped, but it turns out I really liked the flat iron look. Now her hair kind of clashed with her kind of blended in with the hat, so I wanted to make it pop a little bit, so I added some blue to the ends. And there she is with the little hat on. So when adding the eyelashes, my tip is to bend the eyelashes into the shape of the eye before you pop it on and it'll go a lot easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've shifted some of my schedule around so I can post YouTube videos more often, so stay tuned for more. And that brings us to the work of my incredibly talented patrons. They are not all on social media, but if they are, I'd love it if you checked out their work and followed and subscribed. The Oak Magpie even has a video of her adorable punk mouse on her YouTube channel, so make sure to check that out. Extra special thanks to all of my patrons, whether you participated or supported us along the way. I have so much fun doing these collabs with you and I can't wait till the next one. If you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.